All right, so it is here, the entire Warhammer 40K timeline story lore explained by an Australian. Let's get right to the video. Full lore. Sit back, relax. Let's see what this is about because I know nothing. Let's go. G'day, guys and gal. You'd think I would have made one of these videos by now. Me too. Especially since I'm one of the only guys that understands that ADHD-friendly video lengths are a big vibe. And the fact that everyone who seems to make an entire 40K lore timeline video seems to get an absolute shitload of views. True. Alas. I just haven't, I suppose. Until now. Today is the day we I just now learned about and over 30 years of lore Warhammer. In one pretty short video. I'm obviously going to be pretty brutal with what content I actually provide since this video could literally go for 24 hours and still be considered brief. But if there's anything I do well, it's milk my country of origin for views. It has that much shit out of stuff. We will be covering from 60 million BC all the way to the 42nd millennium, highlighting the key events, key characters and whatnot to make even the most non Warhammer person such as, you know, any Anyone above a 7.5 know what is actually going on. The point of this video right. is for you to be able to learn. I won't be talking a lot because I want to learn a lot of stuff. And get them on board our degeneracy. Y'all sit back, relax. Straight towards hell. And yeah, on the off chance this does end up blowing up and getting a million views, I have a store with custom 3D party minis that slap pretty hard. I respect Patreon it. With live action nude Warhammer I respect it. Go ahead, bro. Promo it, bro. Pretty cute. What? Man's got to make a living. Facts. Well, I respect it. it. Facts. All right, what is Warhammer, bro? Hopefully. The thing about Warhammer 40K is that it's considered to be an alternate future of our current reality, with a few alterations, sure. But as far as Warhammer is concerned, you currently watching this video is canon to the 40K universe. Our tale begins 60 million years ago, where life first started giving it a genuine crack after the bang went big. Yeah. Many races evolved, and for whatever reason, most of these races were OP as hell, like the Crave. However, chief amongst these were the old ones, toad-looking motherfuckers who traveled the galaxy <laughs> and seeded life onto countless worlds. They were all powerful, as they were able to tap into the power of an alternate dimension called the Warp, a dimension of okay. pure energy and emotion, unbound by the laws of physics and with limitless potential. The Warp at this time was calm, friendly, and bountiful. Most entities that died would have their souls travel here to either be reincarnated or just kind of chill and float around like a spectral jellyfish. Okay. Not a care in the world. However, there was another race that evolved, the Necrontier, and boy, they had it rough. Their world was getting spanked by solar radiation on the daily, and I guess they forgot to evolve to deal with it as their lives were basically one big skin cancer. They died young, and their entire culture was pretty depressing. Despite this, they were quite successful as a species, creating dark matter spaceships and carving out their own galactic empire. However, despite escaping their cancer-ridden homeworld, their lives remained pitifully short, as they only evolved to live for a short time. They eventually encountered the old ones and were like, fuck yes, please teach us how to make sunscreen and become immortal and shit. But Dang. the old ones refused. The Necrontier were not their creation, and if they didn't create something, they didn't really give a shit about it. The Necrontier tried to wage war against the old ones, but that would be like a dry spittle of cum trying to take down the cocaine bear. The Necrontier got clapped and driven into the corner of the galaxy. While they had a sook, Dang. they discovered a large entity draining a nearby sun. The entity was not sentient, yet it was clearly powerful as hell. It was a Catan, a god of the material universe which was created by the Big Bang. Bull like in its Thanos. Current form, it was basically just a big galactic jellyfish that ate stars. The Necrotier were like, fuck it, and they built large mecha bodies for the Catan to inhabit, thus giving them sentience. Well, it turns out the Catan were fucking assholes, hence the Catan tricked the Necrotier into sacrificing their body and souls in machines that the Catan then fed on. The Doop -doop. Necrotier were promised immortality and a release from their depressing lives, which was partially true. However, now the entire Necrotier race were soulless robotic slaves to the will of the Catan. Dang. The As the Old Ones rivaled the Catan's power and would eventually control the entire galaxy, Galaxy, the Catan led their Necron armies against the Old Ones. The Old Ones had not prepared for hectic galactic war, hence their army struggled against the Catan. However, through a bit of hectic shit, such as the creation of the mighty Krok warriors, the Elder, an Old One creation, figuring out how to summon their gods onto the battlefield, and the Old Ones bending the warp to its will and using it as a weapon, the Old Ones were able to fight back. A uh. shitload of people died, many worlds were ruined, and pretty much all of the Old Ones were eventually killed. However, okay. in return, numerous Catan were shattered and weakened to a point where the Necrons were able to rise up against their Catan overlords, shooting them with a bunch of Death Stars and shit and turning them into Pokemon slash super efficient batteries. See, they wanted to destroy the Catan, but as the Catan were gods of reality, destroying them would destroy reality. The Necrons themselves Dang. were pretty wrecked though. 
Back-to-back -back galaxy shattering wars does that, hence their leader, the Silent King, ordered them all to hibernate for 60 million years, with the idea being that the galaxy would be primed for them to reconquer. See, the Eldar were rising to become the dominant force, and the Silent King wasn't sure if the Necrons could beat them, so better to let the Eldar Empire fizzle out than risk it all. The final act of the Silent King was to break his command module, giving the Necrons free will upon their awakening. To punish himself for leading his race into damnation, the Silent King refused to join them in slumber, choosing to travel the universe for 60 million years instead. The warp had been seriously really? damaged during the war in heaven, as the conflict was called. All the death, suffering and tampering from the old ones had turned it from a calm sea of souls into a dangerous maelstrom. It wasn't totally fucked, however the seeds of corruption were sown, with the realms of chaos forming in the dark corners of the warp. The realms were weak and small, they could not challenge the dominion of the Eldar gods, however they could steadily grow in influence, waiting for their time to strike. For those 60 million years, the Eldar reigned supreme. They had a fuckload of awesome technology given to them by the now extinct Old Ones. Dang. The Necrons and the Catan were gone, and the Crocs were kept in check by culling campaigns. These culling campaigns reduced the Crocs from legendary 12 meter tall killing machines to a bunch of lovable and semi- They was really asleep for 60 million the years, bro? was literally genocided into de-evolution. During this time, Cain, the Eldar God of War, got all pissy and shit and started attacking the Eldar because, you know, he's a highly emotional God of War and he saw a prophecy that said the Eldar would destroy him, so yeah, he cracked it. To prevent the death of the Eldar, the other Eldar Gods permanently sealed the barrier between their realm in the warp and real space, meaning the Eldar could no longer summon the Eldar Gods to their aid. This was actually the beginning of the end of the Eldar Empire. See, after 60 million years, the Eldar got bored. They were masters of the galaxy, lived for thousands of years, and when they died, they were able to just reincarnate with their memories intact. With their gods now at arm's length, the Eldar began to fall into depravity to keep themselves entertained. It started small, pleasure cults on Eldar worlds partaking in narcotics and orgies, which sounds like a fucking vibe. However, it got worse and worse whilst becoming more widespread, with the Eldar moving into violent blood orgies, sacrifice, and other less vibey stuff. The issue was that because the Eldar were a psychic race, their emotions echoed loudly in the warp. With so many Elder railing Coke than railing each other, these boys are so bored they start doing sacrifices. Warp God, the Chaos God Slanesh. Before shit really hit the fan with Slanesh, what? Though, humanity had begun its rise. We had slowly but surely advanced through the years, much in the same way as real life. Uh oh. There was the ancient Egyptian and Greek cultures, the Mona Lisa, and then in the twenty. Oh, so they're going by they're going by real life Fortnite history. Okay. A dumb piece of shit YouTuber called Major Kill. But then things kept <laughs> going. We mastered space travel, figured out how to travel faster than light by inventing the warp. Oh, so drive, now this is the future. That could open a portal to the warp, fly through it, and pop out somewhere else in the galaxy at a micro fraction of the time it would take to do it normally. With this technology, humanity colonized thousands of worlds. We were wildly advanced, with machines and fabricators that could make us anything, as well as highly intelligent AIs to help us. Yes, the Elder Empire was very mighty and controlled a lot of the galaxy, but not as much as you would think. They didn't breed very quickly and they were content to control their own territory without much ambition for expansion. So while I'm sure the humans and Elder did fight here and there, it wasn't either race's goal or hobby. But just as the Elder and the human empires were both at their zenith, shit hit the fan. Oh no. These robotic servants rose up and started attacking their creators. Shit was fucked. Rumbars were crashing into people's ankles, sex robots started blueballing people, you know, real twisted <laughs> shit. However, through great effort, as well as the help of a few alien races humanity was mates with, the robots, the men of iron as they were called, were destroyed. However, shit oh, then got even worse. Okay. See, the Elders' empire spanning blood orgies had destabilized the warp making interstellar travel super hard, hence cutting mankind's empire off from itself. Then to make matters even worse worse, the psychic mutation emerged, with a number of humans on every world developing psychic powers. These oh powers no. Cool at first, with many human worlds celebrating these psychic superheroes. Oh then no, bad, that's not good, bro. The of chaos within the warp used these psychers, who drew their power from the warp as living portals to invade real space, destroying thousands of human worlds in a demonic blood rush. Many other human worlds simply died from lack of trade, especially ones like mining worlds that relied on off-world imports of food. This period of darkness was the age of strife and lasted 5,000 years. 5,000 years of human worlds being cut off and preyed upon by other alien races, 
5,000 years of lost technology. It's because of these 5,000 years that humanity went from a, let's be friends with aliens to the hyper racist fucking genocide the tits off anything that isn't human. Oh wow. Even Earth wasn't spared. Cut off from its empire, Earth, or Terra as it's called in Warhammer, devolved into nuclear civil war, rendering much of the world inhabitable. During mankind's rise and fall, a special human had been born thousands of years before the birth of Christ. The culmination of a thousand psychic shamans performing ritualistic suicide all at once to combine their soul into a super being. The Emperor of Man was born. Now he wasn't born with the title of the Emperor. Look at his legs! But he was already wise as fuck as a child, and he traveled the world. He acted as a shepherd to humanity, but not always as a ruler. Sometimes he would step in and lead a nation, but once he was satisfied they weren't going to fuck themselves, he would go back to the shadows. See, his unique birth... Sounds like a good guy. Special, ...an immortal being with immense physical and psychic power. He had shepherded mankind into a golden age of technological enlightenment that lasted thousands of years before the Age of Strife, and the Emperor was content, happy to stay on the sidelines, expanding his knowledge. However, when the Age of Strife did hit and things went sour, he foresaw that humanity would be doomed if he didn't step in. So he said, fuck this shit, and decided that he would become the master of mankind and lord of the galaxy. Huh, fuck yeah. Okay. He detected that the Elder Empire was approaching its climax of depravity, which would birth Slanesh. The psychic shockwave of that birth would blow away the warp storms that prevented interstellar travel, allowing humanity to be once again united. At this point, yeah. it was around the 31st millennium. To prepare for this, the Emperor used his dozens of thousands of years of knowledge to create his custodies and thunder warriors, two superhuman breeds of soldiers. Boy, that armor looks fire, bro. Masterpieces. The Emperor's personal Look at that armor. Guards. The thunder warriors were crude, short-lived brutes, but were very powerful in their own right. With these superhumans, the Emperor conquered Earth. However, he knew that the Thunder Warriors would not be able to conquer the galaxy for him. They died young and were kind of retarded. Hence, he got his custodians to cull the Thunder Warriors in order to replace them with the much more marketable and long-lived Space Marines. See, the Emperor foresaw many calamities to come. Boy, that armor's fire. Chaos, which was the demonic forces that had been biding their time since the war. Oh, who's heaven, that? To, who's that? The over to the right. A giga orc capable of conquering the galaxy and other nasty shit such as the Necron's Awakening and the arrival of the Tyranids. So he created 20 demigod generals in secret using his own genius, the souls of minor warp gods, and his own DNA. They were his sons, his Primarchs, and from their DNA, he created the Space Marines oh. as the sons of the Primarchs. However, due to some warp spaghetti and the intervention of the Chaos Gods, the Four Lords of Hell, the Primarchs were stolen from the Emperor's laboratories and scattered throughout the galaxy. The Emperor was like, This man created and he launched 20 demigods. Crusade with the aid of Mars, Terra's neighbor, who had wildly advanced technological and manufacturing capabilities. Two things required when you need to conquer a galaxy. How did the Emperor get Mars to be his personal factory, I hear you ask? Well, during the medieval ages, he beat up a Catan that was on Earth, put it in a coma, and locked it under Mars. Its essence and influence then advanced the Martians' people's technological intellect. The Emperor then exploited their religious beliefs into tricking them that he was their god and messiah. Because of course he did. The Great Crusade oh, was epic. Wow. Hundreds of thousands of space marines and countless billions of army and navy personnel conquering, colonizing, liberating, or integrating various worlds, rapidly expanding the Imperium of Man. As each world was brought into the fold, either through force or diplomacy, the Imperium swelled. One by one, the Primarchs were found and given command of their own legions. The same legions that were created using their own DNA. Sengunius, the Angel, was given his Blood Angels. Rogel Dorn, the stubborn asshole, was given his Imperial Fists. Horus, okay. the first Primarch to be found and the Emperor's favoured son, was given his Lunar Wolves. As the Primarchs were found, the pace of the Crusade accelerated, as now mankind had these demigod superhuman commanders leading the charge. But what about the Elder? Why didn't they stop humanity's conquest? Yeah. Well, when Slanesh was finally born, her birth instantly killed 99% of the Elder and destroyed most of their worlds. Most Eldar were too insane and depraved by that point to understand the danger of their indulgent actions. The She's pretty, I can't lie. The Dark Elder, who were living in the Webway, an artificial network of psychic tunnels that cut through the warp and were shielded from the warp. The Exodite Elder, who foresaw the calamity and left beforehand. And then the Craft Worlds, living continent sized ships that were able to avoid what the What type of ship of is that? Their nomadic nature, hence, were able to fly away from the epicenter of Slanesh's birth. But yeah, the Elder were in no position to challenge humanity's rise. Despite mankind and the Emperor's dominion, the Biggie knew humanity would never be safe until Chaos was beaten. See, not many people knew about Chaos, and the Emperor didn't want people to know, as knowing about it gave it strength. 
Hence, the emperor had created a secular godless imperium, the idea being to drain the chaos gods of strength as everyone became atheist and didn't believe in anything. The power oh. of belief is a big theme in Warhammer. But to beat chaos, the emperor had to remove humanity's reliance on the warp. Most notably, he had to remove warp travel. See, mankind was slowly evolving to become a psychic race, like the Elder, and the Emperor didn't want the birth of Slanesh II, Electric Boogaloo, so he began creating his secret webway project, the goal being to break into the Elder webway and then convert sections of it for human use. Then humanity could have massive cities full of psychers that were kept away from the warp and chaos, as well as use the human webway for risk-free travel. If it wasn't mm. obvious, warp travel, i.e. cutting through hell to travel, possesses a lot of risks to someone's lifespan. Chaos did not want humanity to free itself of its influence. If the webway project was completed, then Chaos would suffer greatly as its main food source would be denied to it. Hence mm. it reared its ugly head and decided it was time to act. The time for waiting was over. Chaos exploited the weakness, insecurities and ego of the Primarchs Horus and Lorgar in order to turn them to their cause, filling their heads with half-truths and twisted visions of the future. From here, Horus was able to convince half of his Primarch brothers to join him in rebellion against the Emperor. Thus the Horus heresy began. It started horribly for the Emperor's forces. Three of his Space Marine Legions and their Primarchs were lured into a trap and massacred, whilst the rest of his forces were scattered. See, Horus had been named uh -oh. War Master before his betrayal, so he was able to command the Imperium's armies whilst the Emperor worked on the Webway project. As such, Horus was able to direct no, there's no his point, buddy. ammo to his traitor legions, whilst he then sent the more powerful Loyalist legions to the far edges of the galaxy, keeping them out of the way. The Heresy was a time of titanic battles, heroic last stands and acts of defiance, brother against brother, father against son. It culminated with Horus and his army sieging Terra itself. The siege ended with Horus killing Sanguinius and then the Emperor killing Horus in turn, but not before suffering mortal wounds. With Horus's death, the traitor forces were broken and driven back, eventually regrouping in the Eye of Terror, which was the epicenter of Slanesh's birth, a hellish realm that the Loyalists were unable to penetrate. The okay. Emperor was placed on the Golden Throne, an extremely advanced device that both kept him alive and killed him in equal measure. His soul lived on, but his body withered. See, the heresy had done obscene damage to the Imperium. The Webway project had been destroyed. Multiple Primarchs had been killed, with most of the traitor Primarchs ascending to become Demon Lords. The Golden Demon Lords? Lords. To guide the Astronomicon, a beacon of light that allowed the Imperium to navigate the warp, whilst also keeping the Webway gate under Terra shut, as since it was destroyed, it had become flooded with demons. Hence, the Emperor has sat on the throne demons. for 10,000 years, literally holding his Imperium together as his body withers and he endures unimaginable agony. The Imperium survived the Horus Heresy, but without the Emperor's guidance, it began a slow and steady decline over the next 10 millennium. The Emperor's secular atheist policies were abandoned in favor of the Imperial cult, a mandatory religion that declared the Emperor as a god. Alien races that had been pushed to the brink of extinction, like the Orcs, returned in great number and began threatening the Imperium. Uh -oh. Eldar Raiders also that joined the fun, whilst the newly established Chaos faction was an ever-present threat. Other new threats emerged, like the rapidly advancing Tau Empire, or the arrival of the Tyranids, a parasitic hive mind species from another galaxy. On top of that, the Necrons began awakening as it had been 60 million years, with the Silent King himself oh, I forgot the about them. traveling the cosmos. To make matters even more worse, Chaos had finally marshaled enough strength to deal a crippling blow to the Imperium at the end of the 41st millennium. Destroying the armor is the nice. Of Cadia, which allowed the Eye of Terror to expand and cut the galaxy in half, with one half of the Imperium now no longer being able to warp travel, as well as there being no more Astronomicon on that side. Demons invaded a thousand worlds as the death scream of the Imperium began to sound. Oh All no. was lost. Until it fucking wasn't. Through a serious effort of both the Imperium and the Elder, Rebute Gilliman, the Avenging Son, the Lord of Ultramar, and one of the greatest Primarchs to ever live, was revived from his near-death stasis. With his resurrection came the unveiling of the Primaris Marines and the start of the Indominus. Uh-oh, we've seen these guys. Mankind's revenge against all its foes. We've seen these guys. Smash Chaos aside, reclaiming many Imperial worlds and pulling the Imperium back from the brink. He defeated his demon brothers Magnus and Mortarian in the process, thus bringing us into the modern Day setting. Gilliman is trying to unfuck the galaxy, 
Chaos, led by Abaddon the Despoiler, is trying to fuck the galaxy. The Silent King is attempting to cut off the warp from the galaxy, which would fuck everyone who wasn't a Necron. The Tyranids yeah. are trying to eat everyone's ass. The Elder are trying to awaken their god of death to take on Slanesh. The Orcs are just having a great time with all the war and shit going on. The Tower are just trying to exist in a galaxy that fucking hates them. Yep. In the grim darkness of the 42nd millennium, there is only war. And that is more or less a rundown of the entire lore of Warhammer 40k. Oh my Obviously, god. there is a shitload of important side quests and side lore that I haven't included because, you know, like, 24 hour video if I did. But this should bring even the most functional non 24 hour video is crazy. Up to speed. If you enjoyed the video and you want to support the channel, then pick oh up my major god. Mini, a wide range of high quality professionally printed minis that ship. Oh, I'm just trying to digest everything he just talked about. For more fucking entire lore and shit Bro. content. <laughs> Join the Discord for more videos. See you on the next one. Peace. <laughs> He's very weird. But I like him though. I like him. Brother, I'm trying to like digest everything that he Everything was just coming at me. Just I'm trying to like take everything in. Okay, so I, I kinda know what like a gist of like what happened. Okay. I didn't know that they actually went off. I don't know that they actually went off of like, like you know, like the human like history or something like that. But other than that, comment down below what you guys think about this. Hope you guys learned something. I learned something. See you later for the next one. I'm out and.